Daniel. Uvla Lotak, Uvana Atara Napaktuk, Napaktuk Mu in Yipak Mu Daruna, Kike Tagruk Mu Aruna. Apaga James McClellan, Akaga Sally McClellan. Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Kat. Napaktuk is my Inupak name. I come from a small village in Kotzebue, and I just told you that my parents are Sally and James McClellan. This is a small village in Alaska called Kotzebue. I'm gonna tell you a little story about my dad. So it was a few years ago and I was standing on a beach in front of my dad's house in Kotzebue. And this is a place I had been to lots of times before. My dad and I would normally throw out a net and we'd catch a lot of fish right there and we would bring it in and he would put the fish down and I would help cut it up. And I had done this hundreds of times before, right? And my dad was always proud of me when I did this. And, and I went off to college and I came back and I was doing this. My dad wasn't quite as proud of me this time. And he actually looked really disappointed. And I'm not used to my dad being disappointed in me. My dad didn't finish high school. And I finished high school and I finished at the top of my class. And that made my dad really proud. And then I got accepted to all these big fancy schools and I went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Go Badgers. <laughs> And my dad was really proud of that too. And you know, it's a school of 40,000 people on it. There were 250 of us native students and I was the only Inupac on campus for most of that time. And so when my dad was all proud of me for going off to this big school and getting my degree, he didn't realize that on a daily basis I was feeling, I was, um, feeling uh, microaggressions, I, I was feeling imposter syndrome, I was feeling like I was failing because I was comparing myself to everybody else and nobody else looked like me. But I came home one time and I told dad what I was doing and he goes, oh, tell me, tell me what you're doing with this big degree that you're getting. And I said, dad, I am studying the genetic and environmental regulation of uh, toxin production in the gram-positive bacteria Staphylococcus aureus. And my dad said, okay, that sounds good. And I said, I'm doing this as I earn my Bachelor of Science in Medical Microbiology and Immunology. And my dad said, okay, so if you're a doctor, what's wrong with my arm when I do this? It really hurts. And I said, no, dad, I'm not a doctor. And what I'm doing, dad, is I'm studying these proteins that are made by this bacteria. And when, under certain conditions, this bacteria makes these toxins and it makes us sick. And we're trying to figure out how to control them because if we can figure out how to control those, we can figure out how to control the disease. And my dad was proud of me. He was like, that sounds really important. Now, I don't have Staph aureus. Um, I don't know anybody else who has Staph aureus, but you say it's really important, so I trust you, it's really important. So I thought about this and I went back to Wisconsin and I was a tech for three more years doing the same stuff. And then I went off to grad school and, and I did that because as I was a lab tech, I realized the person with power in the lab is the person with the PhD. So I had to get the PhD because I wanted to be able to run the lab and figure out my own questions to ask. And so I went to grad school and I studied this parasite and I went back home and I told my dad about it. And, and he said, okay, what are you studying now? And I said, Dad, I'm studying this parasite because I had learned, right? You don't use all the big words right away. So I said, Dad, I'm studying this little microbe that lives inside of our cells, and when it replicates, it lyses those cells. And so if those cells are in your heart, then your heart is broken apart. And if it's in your brain, your brain is damaged. And he said, okay, I don't know anybody who has toxoplasma here in Kotzebue, this little town of 3,000 above the Arctic Circle, but you tell me it's really important, so I'm proud of you. And so he was, he was proud of me. I was the first Inupac to earn a PhD in microbiology and only the second Inupac from our region to earn a PhD in anything. And right now, the Hanks. And there are actually only, um, there are fewer than 100 of us Alaska Natives with PhDs. And, and again, as I was earning this PhD, there were those microaggressions. Uh, the people who were saying, you're so eloquent, because they never expected somebody from the Arctic Circle to be able to put two sentences together, let alone give a talk or the people who were expected me to be able to speak on behalf of all 200 different tribes that are in Alaska. So I got my fancy PhD and, and I, I did a postdoc at the University of Oregon and while I was in Oregon, I, I came home again. And 
one thing you have to realize is that every time I went home from Wisconsin, it was a two-day trip. And so I would go home and I would spend all my time with my friends because I had spent so much time getting there. And, and it was two days back. And I couldn't be gone for a long time because I had cells to keep up. And I had, I had mice that I was infecting. And so I had to hurry back. And so I only spent like a week at a time. And most of it was spent with my friends at home. And, and so I wasn't hunting, and I wasn't fishing, and when my dad br brought an ugrek to the beach, I didn't know what to do with it anymore because it had been a good 20 years since I had cut up an ugrek. And so when I went back home as a postdoc, and we had thrown this net out in the ocean, and, and I was really proud of the fact that I could still bring those fish back in and bring them home to my dad, my dad um, said, okay, what are you studying now? And I said, dad. I'm finally doing something Alaska related. I'm using this Alaskan fish called stickleback and it's found all over Alaska and it's an evolutionary model and I'm studying it to figure out how microbes in your gut stimulate, um, help you grow. And this was a big deal and he said, why are you doing that? And I said, well, I know all those other things had nothing to do with Alaska natives, but we have obesity and diabetes, right? And that's controlled in part by our microbiota. And, and not only that, but people have inflammatory bowel disease, and, and that's because of inflammation in the gut changing the microbial community. Or maybe it's that the microbial community is causing inflammation, and we don't know which one comes first, and so I'm trying to figure that out. And so my dad goes, okay, well, I don't know anybody with IBD or... Um, whatever you said, so um, I, you tell me it's important, so I'm proud of you. And so we went out and we got our fish, and I told him, now this dad you'll relate to, I can dissect 60 fish in one hour, and now that my dad was impressed with. Fish, he understands. And so he said, oh, great. So we went out and we got our fish, and he brought them back to the beach, and he plopped them down on this table, and he said, good, here's 60 fish, dissect them. <laughs> And I said, Dad, the fish I dissect are this big. <laughs> I don't know what to do with the salmon anymore. And that's when my dad was disappointed in me. Here I had gotten all these big fancy degrees, and I had studied all these things that everybody in the lower 48 told me were really important. And I came back to Alaska, and I wasn't doing anything that was related to what we, were, we needed to have done. This is my fish. <laughs> Those of you who butcher fish, this is not a, this is not a well cut up fish. <laughs> so I thought about that and I went back to the University of Oregon and then a job opportunity came up at the University of Alaska Anchorage. Now, this entire time I was down in the lower 48, I was trying to recruit Alaska natives to go into science because we have so many big questions that we need to answer. And who knows about those questions better than we do? The people who've been there for 10,000 or 15,000 years. The people who have been studying that for 10 or 15,000 years. So I was trying to recruit these Alaska natives and I couldn't get them to come to Oregon or Wisconsin. But I found, I got a job opening, um, I applied to a job opening at the University of Alaska Anchorage and I stepped off the plane and I went to the grocery store and all of a sudden everybody there was native. Anchorage was 20% Alaska native. I was home. I wasn't the only person on my campus anymore and in fact, the first day I went to teach in front of my students, there was an Alaska native in my class and I about cried. Anchorage has 10% Alaska natives. We can do better, but 10% is a heck of a lot more than being the only one out of 40,000 students. So now when I go home, and I'll go home in, at Thanksgiving, I'll tell my dad two things. One, dad, I can cut up a, a fish. <laughs> Let me help you with that. And two, I'll be able to tell and look, Dad, what I'm doing is I'm studying research topics that are important for Alaska natives, like how these contaminants in our water are affecting our development and our growth. And I'm studying how plants that we've been using for 10,000 years to cure different diseases are helping kill microbes in our body and how that disrupts the microbiota. And I'm doing this while teaching Alaska natives. I have Alaska native students in my lab that I can mentor. And, and better than that, I can go out to my big classes with 100 students and I can say, look here, this is what you can be. This is the type of thing you can study. And these students, by going to the school with 10,000, with uh, over 1,700 Alaska Native students, won't have to face all those microaggressions that I faced or be quite as lonely as I am because they'll have a support group there. And so when I look out at a stage like this or a group like this, 
I'm inspired because you all are going to be able to go home and you're going to be that person for your people. You're going to be able to help them get past all of these obstacles that they're facing, whether they're LGBT or whether they're uh, just brown skin like me or whether they're the only INUPAC on campus. You're going to be able to help them get past that. So thank you for SACNAS for inviting me and Dad, I hope you're proud of me now. <laughs>